To the east of the city centre of Leeds sits the communities of Cross Green, Richmond Hill, Osmondthorpe and East End Park, known collectively as Richmond Hill. Within this area, which is one of the most deprived wards in Leeds, an enormous social change is happening. The change? Cultural diversity. This area? Oh well, when we were children, I mean, we were all, we were all good neighbours, all friendly neighbours, we were railway people. This was the first place, a lot of different people, coloured and Asians and gypsy people, a lot of different ethnics come to this cross green. You know Mount St Mary's uh, Church, Irish built it, the church, when they come over with famine and all that. Yeah, so probably my ancestors come over at the same time. They built the churches, they built the schools, they had missions, they had um, centres for unmarried mothers, they had everything in this area. That, that thing there was, that school there was full of nuns, wasn't it? It was one of them things, I can't remember the call though. A convent? Yeah. We've got a lot of people who've worked in tailoring and massive tailoring and industry around here and mills and such like, all off at Canal area. Why, this is sort of the typical tourist back-to-back -to -back tourist houses for all the workers. Morecambe and Wise, uh, not Morecambe and Wise, Wise, lived in the street. They lived up street with his, they were 14 then, Ernie Wise. And uh, he lived, his father was a railway man. I think there were 80 shops, right round, right round, right round, Pontefract Lane, right round. Everything, we, we, I think we had three doctors, two doctors anyway, in road down here, and um, three or four butcher shops, fresh meat, lovely. About 20 years ago, this place, people did not want to move out. Once they start again, some maybe bad, bad running things, and the place got start going down, and it's got itself, got itself start going up. And it didn't start with criminality. It started with knocking down the buildings and leaving us with empty spaces for rubbish and rubble and cars were burnt out. They closed the post office, they closed the shops, they knocked down the schools. They, the government, whoever made the decisions for this area, took our community away. I used to live here 18 years ago. There were no coloureds, no Asians, and you could leave your doors open go shopping into town. Can't now though. When we moved here, you see, first of all, I, I mean, honestly speaking, Nagyat, my wife, didn't like the area. She was shocked. The last amount of news that's happened, and they think it's like that all the time. I don't think it's that bad around here. Around here, it's a really bad area. If you can't stick up for yourself, you will be bullied and bullied till you get put out of this area. Well, when I was younger, um, like everybody stuck up for each other and that. But now it's all changed because everyone's carrying on with each other. In most walks of life, 50% of people would be uncomfortable with change, full stop. This area is not typical for what is called diversity. This is, uh, could be classified as white area. It's not all just white anymore. You know, there's different races, there's posh people, there's people from Ireland, there's all sorts of different ones. I know when we first moved in, our street was, there's like no black people, no people from any other background. The only people that came from like any other background other than like white, Working class was the people that owned shops. In this street, I think we've got that's a black couple over there. There's a couple higher up. I think there's three. There is more immigration into the estates because there has to be because people have to go somewhere. And if you've got empty properties, that's where people go. And this is an area that is mainly of social housing. People have got the right to live you know, where they want to live and what colour they are, it doesn't matter. If you had a group of red things and there were a few blue things, they stand out more, don't they? So when you have a group of whites and you see a few blacks, they stand out a lot more. Why do you think they come in? 
because they've all stuff in the art star version and that and come over here for a better life. I have a problem in my country, a political problem. I am like it. I'm coming here, England. They come here from other countries because maybe their families will be here. There's just chances here. I mean, more chances and proper I think, opportunities for people to have to go ahead with their life. It's good for the area because it's building diversity, it's building bridges to other parts of the world, it's bringing in new workers to the area and it's encouraging people to get a sense of community. Round East End Park everybody knows everybody, do you know what I mean? But like more people are coming in and you don't you don't know as many people now so you've got to be more careful. To see somebody stranger walking to give a second thought, who's he? Where's he from? Why is he here? I've never heard anybody say when these houses have come empty and, and, and blacks have come in, I've never heard anybody say, really, oh, you know, look who's come to live there. The people who are moving out of the state, they're taking over. We don't like it. Eastern Parkers and that, we don't like it. What's the, you know what I mean? What's the point in coming out of the state thinking you can rule it when it's not your state? They're just getting moped, they're getting shipped on here, left, right and frigging centre, and it's not fucking good. It's taking a piss and it does my head in. You know what I mean? Just like, just like your own head is getting swept out from under your feet. And it fucking winds me up. Do you think they want to be here? Well, they must do, because they get easy life, you know what I mean? Claiming benefits, I never claim not in my life. Apart from sick pay, they fucking take everything. They get free cars, free phones, free housing, free food, free everything. And then when we go to try and get a claim of good benefit, you can't get it. Because they've all got it. Why are people so frightened of change? It's been the same for a while. It's been the same for a long time. Um, I mean, you get people that get up and have the breakfast at a certain time in the morning, especially in an older generation. Um, they go to bed at a certain time. They read the newspaper at a certain time. And it must be very difficult for them to change their routine. I wouldn't like it. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to have a set routine. It's like, all your life, the estate's been the same. And slowly, you're seeing it changing to something that you class as worse than it was. I won't like that. If I saw it changing now, as I was getting older, I wouldn't like that. People think that, oh, it's ours. You know, this is our area. People, New people shouldn't be coming in, especially if they're not the same as us. You know, you got to, people just don't accept you straight away. It's not there, it's ours. And it'll always be ours. That's why so much kicking off. The area, it's not what it used to be. And no one really wants to bring kids up around here. If you don't have to, you don't want to. And that's what's failing the community. People are leaving it. I think they feel a bit pushed down. Because there's... There's a, there's a lot of people, there's not just a few, there's a lot of people from different countries and that now. You go in some communities and every, nearly everybody but is a, uh, an immigrant and there's a little handful of... Uh, I think that's where it's gone wrong, they're putting too many in one place. Now the area is a cultural mix with all sorts of people living in it. They don't share the culture with us. You don't see me going around the streets playing these, what do you call it, drums? This is not the old imperial society. This is not. This is not even the society, I mean, 30 years ago. See? Uh, it starts to become a very open society. Open society means everybody is entitled to his own ideas whether tolerant, racist or whatever. There's just, there's everybody around our end. Everybody from all over. Zimbabwe. Czechoslovakians. Iraq, Cosmo. Turks, where are the Turks from? Turkey. Oh, are they from Turkey? Yeah, <laughs> well, there's people from Turkey as well. Well, I know. 
My granddad and he comes from Caribbean, Nigeria, right. Jamaica, Zimbabwe. Lots of places. Chinese people. Amsterdam. And I'm from Zimbabwe. Kosovans. Iraq. I had this Japanese friend. Poland. There's just lots of people. Do you know where they are when you look at a map of the world? Not really. Well, if, if I read it and studied it, I probably would. I come from Ghana. Ghana is a country in West Africa, which is near the... Uh, actually, I've forgotten the, where, the sea, which is near it. But it's all sunny and the people there are very good. They are peaceful, kind. We haven't had no tribal wars in years. And actually, the government is building up. Do you actually know that it was colonised by Britain? That's why we were, maybe we picked up some parts or some cultures from our colonised leaders to, you know, speak your English or be able to um, learn part of your, you know, culture from us for ourselves. I only have mates from other countries. They can teach you part of their language and you can help teach them. Itch, ni, san, shi, go, wok, och, ku. We all play with each other. I get more friends now. I made some friends that I'm, I myself didn't even think of it to be possible. I'm, I, whenever I go out of my house here, yeah, all my neighbours, I mean, all of them say hi to me. I mean, uh, embrace me, I've seen them. I'm a fellow member of them. That made me stop. That was really surprising to me. Britain being a thing, a rich country and all that, man. It's like they won't compare themselves to, you know, people like us. People, you know, black people. But it's all changed all of a sudden and you know, people white people and black people coming together and doing stuffs together, that was really amazing. I mean, when you think about it, in time and years to come, we're all going to be mixed up anyway, aren't we? I mean, you can't stop people like couples falling in love with a coloured man and a white girl and, and that, and so we're all going to be, in years to come, we're going to be mixed races. Well, I've got a... A nephew, and he married a coloured girl. Now, I've got a cousin, and he'll turn around and say, what's he married that black bitch for? Can't call her that. She's a great lass. Admittedly, this split up now, but they've had three beautiful children. I mean, my own daughter went and married an Algerian. Uh, she divorced them, like, but... I mean, I accepted him. You know what I mean? You were a lovely man. And I've got a daughter that's got two half caste kids. I've got another daughter that's got a little girl that's half Asian. And some of them are better looking than some of white kids. I shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> Not with having 24 grandkids. <laughs> I said to my daughter, colour, you don't call them coloured man. You call them black and they want to be called black. They're African. And she, uh, oh, my daughter, you know, she's up in all this and tells me the black people and, and others are Asians, you see. You know, there's Asians and they're black. When I was at school, and I used to get called, you little gypsy this and you little gypsy that. They'd never get done for her. But as soon as I'd say, you like black this and you black that, that, because I used to say, I got brought up, if anyone hit you, you've got to hit back. If anyone calls you names, you've got to call them back. You've got no father, so at dinner, you've got to stick up for yourself. When we was like in school and people had called me like you um, gypsy this and you um, travelling that and you stink and all that, I'd say, yeah, 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 that's me. But I'd get put out of school for it. All over me calling them names, they'd think, well, I was racist, but they're not racist because they're all right to call us gypsies. But we're not all right to call them black because of the colour. So I said, well, what's the difference? What's the difference between a black, an Afghanistan, a Pakistan and a traveller? What's the difference in between them? Because Asian people, the backgrounds is from a travelling life, like travelling people is from um, India. 
So like from years and years ago, they are like in backgrounds from like India, but like they don't they don't say that. They just think, oh well, they're not part of us. They're just um jippos and things like that. There, but like I turned around and said, we're all the same. We're all the same. We're all we're all the same underneath, only different colour skins. People that come into the area, they've grown up in a completely different system. But at the end of the day, the human beings, they've got two legs, two arms, the same as, you know, they're the same as the rest of us. Got all the same things inside, yeah, you've all got personality and everything like that, so yeah, same. As long as the society is multi-cultural uh, society, uh, it is very necessary or very important thing uh, to be uh, accept, I mean, the other respect me and accept me as I am, different, in a different way, as I accept them and respect them as different from me. Well, if they're more picky about all the letter, yeah, then probably, yeah. It'd probably be all right. What I might have in common with them, no. No, really. Because I don't have to speak to them, I just keep myself to myself and just go out with my mates. They're a different thing, yeah, aren't they? They're a different culture to, to what I am. I don't really see a difference. The only way, like, I'm different is because, like, I've been brought up, like, to do different things. Your culture is your culture. You can never change your culture. It's like me saying I'm going to be Jamaican tomorrow or I'm going to be this tomorrow or Muslim tomorrow. You can never change that, but you can change your ways, can't you? I couldn't change my way anyways, like, even if I wanted to. Like, I don't want to bet, like, I couldn't go to a non-traveller uh, because I'm, I've still got it in me. I think it's brilliant, having different race, different comp different people, different cultures, different lifestyles. And if you are combine them all in one, I can assure you, you, we will be just the exact same, but in different ways. I don't think everyone has everything in common. I think a lot of people that live around here um, aren't very well off. They all live in council houses. We're not rich, but we're not poor. We're sort of in between that. And that's what nearly everyone on this estate is. No, I don't think that we have all in common, really, because we're from different worlds in a way, aren't we? No, I don't know. Well, obviously, I've got something in common with them, but I don't know. They're not English, they're like whatever they are, but so you can't really have a good conversation with them. Have you tried? No, don't talk to anybody. Oh, from different countries. Because you would feel like a right div when you're going up to them and having a chat with them. And all your mates thinking what you're doing. When they come in, half the time, they don't know how to speak a lot of English. So it's hard to communicate with some of them. They should be taught English straight away. So they know what to run about. And I think the communication problem should be, that should solve the community problem straight away. I have friends, English friends, and like I'm speak. English language. I'm very like speak English language because I'm going to college now. Man's humanity to man is the thing we should all have in common, but the world doesn't have it, so it's hard for the community to have it. Nobody likes them, no one do. None of the people my age, you know, younger, they don't like it. The, a lot of the opinion that you have on the estate is that they don't want people to come in. It, it, they, they don't want people here. Yeah, sometimes one man, oh, refugee, fuck off. Yeah, I'm, OK, I'm done to speaking. OK, he's going. We should be getting money out of the estate instead of them fucking rinsing it dry. Cos that's all they're doing. Taxpayers, innit? It's really, it's off you, isn't it? It's off people like you, if you pay your tax. So you're paying to support them, really? And they're not even British? You see who's going to work in the morning. And there's a lot more, shall we put it, foreigners out and about early hours at morning than what it is white people. And that's what's everything stemming from at the minute. 
we're taking jobs that we wouldn't take. It's like you see these hand car wash places. They're working for pennies. Actually, a lot of these people that come in want to work, but the system won't allow them to work. That's not publicised. That's not on your television saying how long they've got to wait on an asylum list and they're not actually allowed physically to go out to work. I knew a lass that came to country when they were trouble in Kosovo and she came over with her husband and she was a doctor and her husband was also in that sort of profession and they couldn't work in the, that profession because of the government saying they've got to be in the country for so, you know, so long. Sometime I'm go pop, maybe, uh, maybe have no good people, maybe drink, yeah. Sometimes I'm sit down, come people for me, just uh, look at me, to, told me, fuck off. I admire the fact that half of them put up with it, with all the stuff that goes on. Sometimes people come opposite me, hello, how are you? Uh, welcome, where are you from? You okay? Indifferent people. Why do you think that some people are so against a diverse community? Because they don't understand it. It's the way they've been brought up. Because if your parents believe something, then the chances are you're going to be brought up to believe it, and then your children will be brought up to believe it. And then um, it only takes one person in like one family, and it's, it goes all the way through. So people don't understand different people. They don't understand. And also, I think people that come from different countries and speak a different language. Um, I don't know. I think people are scared, both people, you know, on both sides of it, because they don't understand the other people, and um, they don't make any effort to. Hmm, why, why do you think they don't make an effort? I mean, if you live in a street and you've got neighbours, you've got people around you, you know, it's as easy to just say, watch you, mate, than it is to just try and blank them, innit? Yeah, but then if you have been brought up to believe that somebody of a particular colour or from a particular country, or even somebody that doesn't, like, fit your value sort of thing, is dangerous or bad or whatever, then you're going to believe it and you're not going to, like, put yourself out there to try and change your mind. Mm. You just accept what you get taught most of the time. I just wonder whether that's the case around here. I suppose it must be, really. I, I, I think we all find it difficult to embrace change, whatever that change is. If I had a fucking button to blow them all to fucking smithereens, I would. Press the bastard. And that is truth. We have people who are here who think that it's acceptable to be in conflict with them. It's like with police and that, there's a rule for them and a rule for other, and it's not right, they should all have the same rules and that. Say we're fighting with any of them, like at half reckons or out. If they hit us, not much would happen, it might just be a little assault or something, but if we hit them, even, it might not, even if I haven't got out to do with race, it'll always be racially aggravated just because they're black. People are, like, attracted to other people that are like them. Cos it's just easier to get along with them. Most of the time, you're not, you're not just hitting them because they're black, you're not fighting because they're black, it's because they're start, you know, they're, you fight like they're fighting with you and all, you're not just going to stand there, are you? Everybody could come together if everybody had let each other come together. But people were, they think, well, look at them. You can't deny you know, racism, the existence of racism. Well, I could say the truth that, one, I've never had any racist comment before. Two, I've never involved myself in any fights. And three, I actually don't go out to do anything. Now, these were always kind of really solid working class areas where people stuck together, where people worked hard, where people were poor, but, you know, people kind of was a community, a real mm. sense of community. So why has that changed? I don't understand why that's changed. I don't know, it's just people have got different views now than what they did before. So I think that's why it's all changed, isn't it? Yeah, I, I suppose what I don't really understand is, is why are people getting upset about people speaking a different language? 
don't know. I mean, you you clearly do, and you know that's your. Well, I'm not I'm not racist. Or I don't like that, but it's just what you call it. It's like a lot of time, like a lot of black people are alright, and some Kosovans occasionally are alright and that. Would you describe yourself as a racist? No, I'm not racist. I've got strong views, but I've got pals who are you know mixed race and black and. I was sat with her last other days. She's mixed race. She don't bother me, but asylum seekers, I just feel like they just take the piss, you know what I mean? Just grew up with gypsy people, so that's how gypsy people fitted straight in. But with like uh, um, Jamaicans and Asians and things like that, they're hard to fit in around mm. this community. I don't notice any problems or anything from the people that already lived here. I do know that a couple of elections ago, the BNP was the second highest rated party around here. Which really shocked me. It's not. It's not. It's not organised. Nobody organises all like that. They're just fucking people like to live their own lives. You know what I mean? So there ain't much people go. Badly none that go around kicking off and shit like that. But nobody organises it. People just get pissed off with them. It's as simple as. Nobody. Nobody plans it or walks around and looking for people to kick off with. If they piss them off. And they should stay, they're going to kick off back. They should just stay straight out. We are here, we're here to stay, like the gypsies did a long, long time ago. And that's it. Get into the local community. Stand your ground. I would never forget my roots. But having said that, when you, live, when you come to this country, you've got to think of both ways. Where you're living, where you're from. There's lots of trouble with gangs, car, you know, these that take cars and stuff. People get frustrated about it and they're not willing to put up with it, but sometimes it's hard because they can be very abusive, the gangs, and the joyriders just don't have any consideration for anybody. And I think people feel really angry and frustrated about it all and wish that somebody would step in and help. And I think new people are going to find that quite frustrating as well. To circle an area, you see, as being, uh, you see, a criminal area, that will add, that makes things worse, actually. It's not even that bad. It used to be, but it isn't no more. What's changed there? Loads. There's not cars every night. Loads of stuff has changed. But I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's never been that bad for burglaries anyway, me. From as I can, far back as I can remember, house burglaries and that one have been that bad. It's car crime, things like that, violence. But it's not that bad. There's gangs of kids roaming round. But there's not for kids to do, so what else are they going to do but roam around? There's gangs on the streets um, about our age and they just go around smashing windows and that. I think a lot of it with the kids around here is boredom. If they had something to do, I think it'd be a lot different around here. If you start hanging around with people, then you start in a gang, don't you? Because it's just loads of years together. When you came here first time, there was throwing eggs and other things, and if it's the evening time, they was throwing um, stones, and even catapults, they broke our window last time. It's not always young people, it can be adults as well. Some of them, they are not, they are children, you know. They are children by age and normally five years. Did you feel intimidated? Felt away about the gangs being there? No, cos I know most of them anyway, so I didn't feel scared or At first I did, cos I didn't idle know them all. And I didn't want to walk past them and stuff in case they had something. And every time I go out and I see them, I call them, how are you, what's your name, where do you live, and all that. So we are now friendly, you know. We are now friendly, so they won't do that. I think young people, they're different, they're different altogether now. Depends how they're brought up, doesn't it? 
You know what I mean? I, I just don't really know. I mean, there's good in everybody. I don't care. Whatever. I'll always say there's good in every person. And they're not all bad. But I, I know young ones are a bit... Sometimes I, I can talk to some and sometimes some don't want to know. The area is a tough area and it's a hard area for young kids to be brought up in. I think boys do feel the need that they need to be bigger or harder than the other one. There's a lot of like young like boys that's up and down, skidding up and down, and the minute you're going out and telling them, could you stop please, I've got a baby, next minute they, they might as well say that in inside your house. Around Cross Green we need some law and order, but I don't think we need some law and order from the police. I think we need some boot camping. Definitely some hard boys get these boys into a good hard graft because there's nothing happening. I was, was driving along, I seen a gang of loads of boys and girls out and I, was, I pulled up like to a friend's house and when I said, what's wrong going on down there? What was wrong going down there? Down there? She said, oh, there was fighting going on, come in. So I said, why, what was wrong? And she was really upset. She said, a dog got set on a baby. I said, what? A dog got set on a baby. Well, I went ballistic, to be honest with you. And it was took to hospital. And ever since that, I thought to myself, what kind of area is this? When residents set dog on a child because, really, because he was black. Disgusted. I think my daughters would have liked us to move away. You know what I mean? It's getting more safer. Um, people are walking on the streets on their own now. Today, nobody communicates, so they just prefer to shut the blinds and just keep inside. I think there's been a lot of initiatives being put into the area, the cameras, the community support officers that are in the area, and they make a difference because they're connecting with people. They run into a, a woman's wall, a wall, not were straight in and not, and they did it on purpose because she'd complained at papers. How scary is that? I mean, don't ask me to complain to anybody because I'd be frightened to death. Poor old chap was coming from the from the club here, and he was hit a couple of times in the face and head with um, a hammer. I mean, you're talking an eighty-year-old man. You know what can an eighty-year-old man do? I was mugged, um, had my bag stolen, everything in it, and not even a month later, somebody tried taking my bag again outside my own house. Other week, up on the Eastern Park area, some asylum seekers tried dragging a lass up street by her feet and her to the house, and then they smacked her in the stump of a scaffolding pole. Uh, they were just, you know, proper try to do it in, for no. Half past eight in the morning, there was a joy rider and they went into somebody's fence. Lord, now at that time in the morning, the school children is out. It's very rare you see, well, I would say, nobody above 15, 16 year old. You get them as little as this, 10 and 11 year olds. And you can see them, you know, they just just see over the steering wheel. The bumps don't stop them. Because they put ramps on the road now, but they don't still stop them doing it. There's cameras everywhere around here. But what can we see? Unless you're blatantly doing it in the middle of view at camera. Police aren't going to know how, have they? Years ago, they put ballards on the streets, which makes it impossible to drive around the area, even if you know the area. The purpose of those was to stop car crime. The unattended byproduct of that was it created a natural place for people to congregate and set fire to things. There seems to be a criminal element that it's just acceptable, and you're supposed to part with it. You're just supposed to, and not live like them because they'll never live like them but you're supposed to live in the environment that they bring to your area they're just arresting people for laugh at police if you're even doing hardly not wrong just having a laugh with your mates and that 
they'll, they'll arrest you for antisocial behaviour. I suppose. Kids are using them as like a medal of honour now. People feel left out if they can't have one. You're not allowed in certain areas and... You're not allowed to do certain things or go to certain houses or... all like that. Call your best mates and that. They're all in your house, so you can't get seen with them. Obviously, you're not going to stop hanging around with them. So you're always in breach, aren't you? What's the point? Because if anything, if you're going to fucking breach them, you're going to breach them. There's no point in giving you them if they can know you are. It's just where you're getting people locked up. No, if I get arrested, you know, for another breach, as Asbo, I'll go to prison and that. Council do Asbo's, don't they? And it's, if you want to get a council house, you probably won't be able to get them. My brother's got an Asbo, and my mum and dad are just... My mum and dad are proper strict with us. I think some of them are just bad. But so, some people do need to part off their parents as well. You see a lot of little kids outside, don't you, really? Do you know when? Out in the streets at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock. Now that's up to the parent to put them to bed. Everybody blames their parents at the end of the day, but the parents can do only so much. I've never been frightened, but this last couple of years it's been really scary. That's why a lot of them now have these security gates, because they do A lot of them have still got the old frames up that they've had for... God knows how many years. And that actually, I mean, brings the image of sort of being in a prison. I don't live in fear. None of my mates live in fear. It's just... Like, you see old women saying, oh, yeah, I'm living in fear and that, but... They've got nothing to fear, cos none of us are going to... Why are we going to say something to an old woman? It, they're just paranoid. That's it's just a fucking thing. Stupid. Why, why, why do you think they get paranoid, though? Cos they're old. Cos of the reputation, the reputation in it. Fucking young lads. And they're going to get scared out of cos, say, the seven lads. And as they're walking through on their own. Do you think they've got any reason to be fine? No, I don't think they have. I've got no to worry about. My oldest daughter lives with her. She's frightened to stay for being in her, ho her own house, on her own. That's why I try and get on with everybody, you know what I mean? Make sure you've got your friends there, make sure you, you've got your social life and you don't have no grief then. This phrase of, if you could keep to yourself, nothing would happen to you. You see, this is actually outcome of fear, you see, and lack of trust. Well, I think that all London bombings and that have added to all tension and that in Eastern Park. London bombings have pissed people off. Of course they have. People going out and blowing other people up on buses. From trains, just blowing every bit of bits for no. One came from Beeston. That's only what about ten minute walk, fifteen minute walk around the corner. Just because one Asian were a bomber, don't mean every Asian in the world's a bomber. I think the martyrs. The fuck all. These people just fanatic sometimes. They just think, oh, we can do this, and they spoil everything for everybody else. If they're on your doorstep, you're bound to be a bit scared, even though it's not their fault, is it? And they're, they're decent people. They were all decent, decent living lads, weren't they? Just because people are from Pakistan or India or not like that, don't mean that they're all terrorists. But that's what it seems like round East End Park, well, round Richmond Hill. We don't know who we're going to be socialing with. That could be one and a half of one of their families. We're socialing with him. We could be getting blown up. There's been a lot of jokes around East End Park with Cosmans and Packers and all this lot about if they've got rucksacks on and all this lot, they're carrying a bomb and stuff, so that's, I think that's added to it all. People look at me in different way. A lot of people looking at me like this, and I feel it, I, nobody see anything, but I, can, I could feel it. And I start to cry, <laughs> because I'm afraid like them, and the, all of them look at me like I am a criminal or... I'm doing uh, something bad. I don't want to feel negative about a certain race or religion, 
but I also don't want to feel positive about them when a certain few people are doing like things like the London bombings. The media, a lot to blame. As per usual, hyped it up, pumped it up. So you're thinking, do I live next door to a terrorist? People can't define who's a Muslim who's not. They just, they just look at the colour, they think, automatically they think, oh, he's a Muslim. Children's attitudes towards empowering their racist beliefs and the statements and the comments that they come out with, yes, that's certainly made a difference for the kids. People that are, say, English, are saying that all, all black people and coloured people are all bombers when it's not just, it's not a mall, it's a few of them. Now that's happened, it's just kind of like one more insult to throw at someone, one more reason to hate somebody that they don't necessarily understand as from a particular background or culture. I don't know, you've got to be suspicious of everybody, not just someone who's from a certain country. I wouldn't really think that they'd bomb this pile of leads. Not ready to blow up, is there, around here? <laughs> Half the houses are empty anyway. Citizenship. What does that mean? Don't know. I think posh people use that word. It really doesn't mean it mean a lot to me, tell you the truth. Tony Blair uses it a lot. <laughs> I've got a clue. God knows. I thought everyone did citizenship at school. Does everyone in this room do citizenship at school? No. What's citizenship? To be a citizen means to be natural. It means no, nothing at all to me. I'm a British citizen and that's it for me. You're a citizen and you belong, don't you? You belong to your country, your, your community, your area, wherever. People st sticking together because of where they're from and things like that. Citizens. Being part of your community. I suppose pulling together as a community. That everyone should get along and be a proper community. But it just didn't gonna happen. It's about caring for people around you. Just respect the neighbours. Behaving in the streets. If you want to become a citizen of Britain, or United Kingdom, and you want to stay here, you should, by law, learn English, make sure you work, not sign up, not get no benefits unless you aren't sick or something. Uh, respect estates. If you're a citizen of one country, you should believe in their laws, abide by them. No matter what country you're from, you've got to buy the law anyway. Not attack anybody or not like because otherwise you get fucking shipped out. I prefer it if none of them were here, but if they had to be here, that's far things what I would do. If somebody says I'm jump for the Queen, I'll jump for the Queen, because I'm pretty citizen. Being a citizen of this country means that you don't have to, you know, diminish the country's pride. To be a part of the culture, to be part of the society, you see, to be part of everything, not in terms of papers, but also in terms of how you feel and how you are treated. Also about what you bring to the society. If you're going to live in the community, you've got to, wait, you've got to think what they're thinking, how you can live and get on with people. If you can't get on with people, you shouldn't be here. Freedom of speech, it's what you like and what you can say. In, in other countries, you cannot even do that at all, you know. And uh, this country, is, it is more freedom. For the new citizen, it's not that difficult to force his way through, you see, on condition that, to have the courage and the wish to be part of this new society. If you think you're going to look for somebody who's going to be very peaceful, there is no such thing. No matter where you go. <laughs> I certainly belong. I belong. I think that, yeah, yeah, it, it maybe is a belonging. We need places for the young kids, for the people to go off the streets. We need shops. We need a good bus service. We need just to get our community back together again.
It'd be lovely, because there's some lovely people who live here. I would, I would like to see the community have their faith in themselves, in themselves. I don't really think about the future. Some people stick around for a long time because they, they're hoping that things will change. Like me. I think it's better than when I first moved in. I hope that it can continue to be diverse. I hope it can start working better for the people who are in it. Cos if more people got along with each other, then it wouldn't be as bad. You can welcome people from wherever they're from. And for everybody to get on together, to mix better than what they are doing, because they're not mixing. Even, you know, the older generation are mingling as well, you know, with different cultures. I'm good for people. I'm told all the people, hello, how are you? Are you OK? Can you come my home, drink one coffee, one tea? Or people understand me, oh, this good man, refugee, just good man, or people good for me. It's going to always be a mixed community, so the people around Cross Greens just better get used to it. The, the real thing is we are here and we are exist and we are all together and we should just live together as we are. I don't expect like everybody to live as one big happy family because it's never going to happen. They're just like fairy tale endings because everybody knows that's not going to happen. But it'd just be nice for like there's not to be so much racism. And for it all to be nice and quiet and peaceful. I hope I stay around here. Give it a few more years and this place be a great place to live. A great place to live. What's your aspirations for your community? Uh, not really, just... I wish you'd stop putting frigging bollards everywhere. People learn to talk and communicate with each other, not arguing, just living.